Hi, this is Mark with SafeDayTrading.org. We'd like to get free information on how to safely day trade the market for real, consistent profits and change your life forever. Go now to SafeDayTrading.org, sign up for the free course. Again, that's SafeDayTrading.org. If you follow the safe day dot, you'll make a lot. And today with me, I have Mike Downey, black box stock educator who primarily works with options. Hey, Mike, how are you? Great. How are you today? I'm wonderful. So, uh, you know, we had a, you were talking about uh, before we started the interview about some of your background. So, why don't you share with us um, kind of how you got to, to black box? Sure. So I was a retail trader for probably about 15 years, and that's pretty much all I knew. Um, I was doing that for a while. It's what I was good at, so it was just one of those paths that I stayed on for a while. And then after 15 years or so, it got to the point where it was a little bit repetitive. So I've been with a few different companies, but it was kind of the same thing regardless of what company I was working for. And then it got to the point where I was just a little burnt out on it. So... After a while, I was kind of doing some investing and trading while I was a retail manager. And then I was kind of making that switch towards, if this isn't something I want to do for the rest of my life, what would I do? And so I took a real interest in trading, not so much the investing side of things, because if I wanted to do this full time, I kind of wanted that immediate income as a day trader and a scalper versus those longer term positions that you just sit in. So after about 15 years of retail and getting burnt out, I started focusing a little bit more on trading while I was working and then got to the point where I was phasing out working and just became full-time trader. Okay. And you were in the retail business, uh, brick and mortar type of stuff. That's what you were in? Yeah, I was working for some big, well-known companies across the country, some Fortune 500 companies, all uh, on the brick-and-mortar side of the retail management. So you were going to do the, the part-time, at-night uh, trading type of thing? Yeah, so being retail, my schedule is kind of flexible. So I'd work some morning shifts, some night shifts, and then some weekends. So if I was going into the stores later on, I would basically trade in the morning as best as I could before I had to go in. If I had a day off during the day or during the week, that entire day I would just be in front of the charts watching and learning and studying and grasping everything I could and kind of getting a good feel for what it would be to be a full-time trader while I still had the income from my retail management position. And then I just slowly kind of phased it out a little bit, going more trading, less management, and then it got to the point where I was just able to cut retail trading out altogether and just focus on, or cut retail management out together, focus on the trading full time. It was a little bit of a scary jump, but it was something that I knew I wanted to do. So the benefits were going to totally be worth it. I just had to focus on how I could make it happen. So when you, when you were getting ready to switch over, because this is an interesting point for a lot of my listeners, because most of them are trying to do about the same thing. Did you replace your income with trading and then and then go to trading, you know, and get rid of retail or what did you know, how did you work that that transition? Yeah, so the way I did it is not the way I recommend other people to do it. I actually did it where I got to a point in retail management where I knew this wasn't what I wanted to do and I was doing trading alongside of it knowing I was going to cut out the retail management, but there was a point where I just got so burned out and I probably wasn't prepared the way I would have liked to be to go into full-time trading. But there was, there was a, like a week-long period where I was just going into work knowing I was like, this just, I'm done with this. This just isn't for me. And I kind of just said, I, one day I just woke up and I just had that, that mood and that environment where I was like, you know what? I'm going to take a huge risk. I'm going to be bold about it. It's kind of the way I've been throughout my life is, they're risks, but they're somewhat calculated, which, you know, as a trader, that you have to be able to calculate risk, right? Yeah. So that's kind of how I've been. And then there was, like, a week-long period where it was just one day after another, and I was just like, I dread getting up in the morning. I'm not doing this anymore. And uh, there was, like, a holiday break in there where I had a few days off, 
in a row. And I was just like, you know what, that's, that's my spot right there. That's it. I'm just going to call it right here. And I just jumped into it. For most okay. people, I will tell you, to be a full-time trader, trading under the stress of having to make a rent or a car payment or put food on the table is a million times different than trading, knowing those expenses are covered whether you make a trade today or not. So when people ask me that, like, what do you really need to be a full-time trader? To do it correctly, I always recommend no debt, having at least a year of expenses in the bank already so that you're not making, you know, 500 bucks trading and then take that out to pay whatever. So you want to grow the account, be able to live off of expenses. And then if you're working and trading at the same time, ideally – you want your trading income to either meet or exceed what you're making at work because you can go into work and you get a paycheck. When you're trading, if you have a bad day trading, not only do you not make money, but you actually lose money. So I always recommend to people, if you're not at least making the same amount you're making from work, you're probably not realistically ready to go full-time trading. You want that extra buffer so that, when you have those bad days, and we all have them, as long as you've been trading, you're going to have bad days, right? So you want that buffer where you're making a little bit more trading than you would at your regular work environment so that when you have those bad days, it doesn't stress you out to the point where you can't focus on what you need to do in the market. Okay. How did, how did it go with, you know, releasing the retail management and your family? Was there... um, it didn't go as smoothly as you would like it to go. <laughs> that was one of those things, like I said, it was kind of a risk. There was no backup plan. So it was kind of like, I'm going to do this, and if it doesn't work out, I need to scramble to figure out how I'm going to live the rest of my life. And I, it was a very stable job. They were big companies. The pay was good. So it was one of those things where, and you, everyone's heard that phrase, like, you know, money doesn't mean happiness, Right. So I had a, a good job. It was paying well, but I was miserable every day of my life. And this was going on for, you know, a few months to the point where it got, you know, I was like, okay, I'm done. So there was concerns about it. It's like, hey, listen, you've got a good job. You know, you, you're respectable with what you do in the industry. You're making good money. Things are going good. Are you sure you want to give that up for something that you don't have any clue of whether or not that can sustain life? And I, like I said, it, was, it got to the point where I was so miserable just getting up every morning that I was like, you know what, it's worth the risk. I'm going to make it work. If I have to, you know, bleed and cry and sweat, it's just, whatever's going on, I'm going to make it work. So there wasn't a whole tremendous amount of support because it was like, what are you doing? But at the same time, it was like, we know you're not happy with where you are right now, so we support the idea of doing something different. Yeah. So is this kind of like uh, is this kind of like the Vikings landing on England soil and then burning their boats so they can't go back? Right. That's pretty much what it is. You know, if, if this doesn't work, I'm going to be a, just as miserable as I was before. So I have to make it work, and there's just no question about it. It's going to hurt here and there, but I, you got to put your head down and just, you know, muscle through it. You, you've got to make this work. And, you know, there was a, a, a there's probably the first year and a half where it was a struggle. It was a miserable time, but I knew what the end result could be. And so, like I said, just put your head down, focus, figure out what's going wrong, make sure you got all your notes on everything you're doing so you can figure out how to fix what's going wrong. And it was a, a good year and a half of, like, holy crap, I might not have made a good choice here. But, yeah, again, yeah. keep your eye on the prize. The end result when you get this and figure it out is the, the benefits way outweigh anything you've ever done. And, uh, like I said, the year and a half was probably a, a little bit scary. You know, there's periods where you're not making money, then there's periods where you're losing money. And all this while you're trying to figure out without the stress of, okay, I've got a rent payment, a car payment, I've got to put food on the table. So there was no plan B at, at the point where I jumped for it. it. You know, land the shore and burn the boats. Let's make this happen. Yeah, well, thanks, thanks Mike, for sharing that because, like I said, there's our, 
there are people out there that are miserable at what they're doing or, you know, they don't have anything they're doing right now and they're trying to learn something else. The point I always tell people is you don't have any customers, you don't have any employees, so it's a lot easier um, to, to trade and learn how to trade if you find the right people. So Yeah, that's what I love about, about it, too. Is we're not reliant on, you know, like it's, it, someone doesn't have to come to our store to make money. Someone doesn't have to buy our product. So it, it is kind of like the, the stock market's not going to close. You know, in, in worst-case scenarios, we've seen it close for a day or a few days, but that generally just doesn't happen. So the stock market's not going anywhere. You're not reliant on other people. It's kind of an amazing position that we're in to be able to do this on a daily basis. Yeah, yeah. Mike, uh, talk about what you're doing now at Black Box. So Black Box, is, uh, it, there's stocks and options that go along with it. It's basically a scanner, and what it's looking for is on the options side of things, it's looking for the hot buzzword these days is unusual options activity, and that's what it's doing. So I work with the options side of things, and I basically teach people how to use the platform. So there's two components to it. There's a community component, and then there's a scanner component. And the scanner component, what it's doing is scanning the exchanges for trades that are taking place. And there's algorithms that are programmed to look for certain things. So what they're doing is looking at all the trades that occur on the market. When they meet certain conditions, it shows up on the scanner. What we've been able to do is figure out the pattern of the trades that come across the scanner to find the really high probability trades. And I've been teaching people basically how to use the system and how to interpret the data for about two years. And just in the last six months, we've actually refined it even further than what we were doing two years ago. So we've got a really good grasp on what we're doing is basically just watching the big funds put their money into the market and how they're doing it. And we've kind of got it really dialed in to the point where we're super high consistent on knowing which trades to take and which ones to avoid. Yeah. So my role is basically teaching people what we're looking for, why it works, how we use it. And then there's a community component to it where there's a chat room that we talk throughout the day. So when people have a question on a chart or people have a question on a trade or if they see options flow coming in and they're not sure if it's good or bad, they can post a question in there and then I'm there to basically go over it and say, yeah, we like that because of this, or no, that one doesn't make sense because of this. So we're using a scanner to find trades and then a community to discuss it all in real time. And when it comes together, it's just it's, it's an amazing tool. Okay. Right. You said that you do two things. You look at directional trades as well as activity, right? Can you explain a little bit about that? So I'm only a directional trader, and I know people that do, you know, the different components like the spreads and the, the condors and the butterflies and all the, the complex strategies. For me, I found that I just don't need that type of stuff because it puts an extra layer on trading that it just kind of distracts me from the main focus of what I'm trying to do. And what I'm trying to do is find something that's going to move in one direction with some momentum so that I can basically take a position sit in it for, you know, 20 minutes, two hours, six hours, three days, a week, whatever we need, and just let that momentum ride with us. So what we're doing with the scanner is it's finding both directional trades and all that multi-leg stuff, but we can sort between the two. So what I'm looking for is how is the big money aggressively opening their directional trades? So that's what I'm most interested in from the scanner is the directional side. I want to see an aggressive opening with a lot of money. And it's a certain way that they do it that we've been able to kind of figure out this is a big trade, but we don't want to take it. This is a big trade, and that's the one we do. So I'm really looking for where is the big money comfortable exposing that money to the market in a directional way? So there is a multi-leg component to the scanner. But from my side of things, I don't do that kind of trading, so I kind of just ignore that flow altogether. And I've got this really specialty way of trading where I want to see where the big money is going. I want to see how aggressive they're going there. And I want it to be a directional trade because, to me, that's just the most simple way of trading is to pick a direction, 
make sure there's momentum or something backing that move, and then just riding the wave with it. Sure. Now, you also have a philosophy for helping your students. What is that, Mike? So I'm on this kind of personal mission to stop retail traders from losing money. And the reason it's kind of a personal thing for me is because, going back to my story, there was a point where I was trading and I was losing money, and I needed to make money to make the rent payment and put food on the table. So I know what it's like to be a trader and constantly lose money. And then I know what it's like to have that breakthrough where something just clicks and you figure it out. So my personal mission and philosophy is basically to simplify trading and help people increase their profits. There's too much noise out there. There's too many people trying to sell you things and courses and exams and this and that, and some of them are legitimately great information. But because social media is free, there's also people out there trying to take advantage of, you know, people that are losing money. You can kind of prey upon their emotions and say, hey, look, I'm going to take care of you. You just need to buy this $1,000 course or take this weekend seminar. So my mission is kind of just simplify trading for people. There's a lot of noise out there. It's hard to cut through all of that. So I'm trying to be one of those people that helps you cut through the noise and just bring trading back to the basics. Learn the specifics of what you need to know. Simplify everything. Cut out the noise. And by doing that, you're going to start seeing profits increase because you're not focusing on a million and one different things. You're, you're literally the basics of why I do what I do, how does it work, and then you just key in on that and really just focus and eliminate the noise. Sure. Yeah, and that's the same thing that we're trying to do, too, at Safe Day Trading. Now, Mike, what's your, can you share a little bit, what's your best trade you've made so far? Um, there's been a bunch of them that, um, so the thing about the scanner is it's really easy to trade that way because we're just waiting for the big money to put their money in and all we're doing is following that. So just last night we saw some flow on Intel and we followed the flow from Intel and it gapped up this morning. We made 173% gain just holding from, you know, it was like an hour or two before closing last night and it gapped up at the opening, we sold it at the opening for 173% gain. So things like that oh, wow. are some of the better ones. Now, I've had some longer-term stuff that I've sat in. We had one of the options flow trades that we were looking at was about $17 million going into this contract, and we opened the position on it. All we were doing is following the flow because someone put a lot of money behind it. And so we followed that one. It dipped on us a little bit. There were a few trades like this where they're down 20, 30 percent, but we see that the big money is still in it, so we stay in it with them. Those trades turned around, and we've made upwards of 200 to 400 percent. And then some of them have just – I didn't hold them this long because I don't have the ability to hold something that's up 400 percent and keep holding it. So when I see some resistance and I'm up a good amount, I'm going to protect those profits. But some people who held it even longer than I did, some of those trades were up six, seven, eight hundred percent, and it's just insane what these things can do. Which is why we're drawn to options. But just understanding that if someone puts millions of dollars into this trade, they have a really strong belief that that trade is going to work out. They're not guessing at it. So a lot of these trades that we're taking, um, depending on the time frame, some of them are you know three days, four days. Some of them are a week. But we've seen some two, three, four hundred percent gains on a lot of these trades just from following what the big money is doing. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you, Mike. I don't know if I'd be able to sit in a trade past a hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, at some point you've got to protect those profits, right? If I'm up a hundred percent and then the next day it gaps down and I'm only up, you know, twenty percent, I'm going to be kicking myself. So there's a point yeah. where, for me, it's more about protecting <clears throat> protect the profits and the gains that you have because it's not your money until it's in your account. So it can say unrealized gain one thousand dollars, and you can look at that and think you're doing great, but until you hit the sell button, that's not your thousand dollars yet. So for me, it, there's a point where 
So in the trading group that I'm with, there's people that will show, the, like we show the confirmations that, you know, here's our entry, here's our exit, to, you know, so people know that we're legit and we're not just talking. There's people that are in some of the same trades I'm in, and they might have 400% gain, and I'm looking at that going, well, that's nice, but it's not my trade style. So I took that trade, and maybe I took 80% gain, and someone's showing a 400%. I'm the kind of person that doesn't get upset over that. I don't look at that and go, oh, if I just held it longer, I could have had this or could have had that. Because to me, that doesn't benefit your trading. You know, that doesn't do anything other than hold you back or make you miserable about what you did and then potentially mess up the next trade. So for me, if I'm up 80%, 60%, 40%, depends on the trade, there's a point where I'm going to lock those in and whatever it does after that, good for you guys still holding, but I'm protecting my profit. Yeah, well, I learned a I learned a valuable lesson a long time ago. There's always another trade. Yes, that's the big thing about new traders. So, uh, I only have two days a week where I can trade full time. I have to make trades these two days. Well, the market doesn't care that those are your two days off for this week, so there might not be a trade if you're forcing something. In the long run, that just doesn't work. You don't get to tell the market what setups you're going to trade. But if you miss something, I 100% agree with you. There's always another trade. No matter how many trades you've missed or you thought you missed, there's always more coming up. So you don't have to force anything. You have to have the patience to sit there, wait for the right setup, take the gains when you see them, if you're happy with them, and there's always another trade coming up. Yeah. Well, Mike, we're running out of time. Can you talk a little bit how people can find you and uh, Black Box? So if you go to tradetalkmedia.com, that's kind of the platform I'm using to, again, to just kind of simplify trading for everyone. There's some videos on there and some trades that I've taken. I'm not really selling anything on there, so it's not designed to, you know, be one of those websites where you go and then you have to join something. It's just informational. But if you go to tradetalkmedia.com, if you scroll all the way to the bottom, there's a list of – there's my picture there and then a list of where you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. On social media, I'm known as 7 Star Mike. And that's across all the platforms. So 7-Star Mike is how you can find me online. But if you go to tradetalkmedia.com, at the bottom there's a list of all the different places you can find me to make it kind of easy to spot. Okay. And how do they get? Uh, how do they find out about Black Box? So for Black Box, you can go to blackboxstocks.com. And there's uh, information there as far as what the scanner does, and there's some examples of, you know, the, the interface and the layout and what you're going to be looking at there. A lot of us will post some things on Twitter as far as the specific trades from there so people can get an idea of the different types of information we're looking for and how we use it. And then there's also we do some trial weeks where you can test out the scanner for free for a week. And if people are interested in that, we can get them set up for that as well. Um, so blackboxstocks.com will give you a rundown of what the platform actually does. Okay. Mike, I uh, want to thank you for your time, and uh, I, I enjoyed talking with you. Yeah, a lot of fun. Thanks for having me here. I can sit and chat with other like-minded traders all day long. So I uh, definitely had a lot of fun chatting with you, and I appreciate the invite on here. Okay, thank you very much. This is Mark with Safe Day Trading. Talk to you later. Hey, everybody. I want to mention, too, that we have a YouTube site called Safe Day Trading, which we show you trades that we make with the techniques that we use. You can also send me uh, questions that you might have at Mark at safedaytrading.org. Anyway, talk to you later.